Hey guys, it's Sam here and welcome back to the channel. So I decided to spend some time getting into my flow again. So I made this quick render of a card that I've been drooling over for a while. The brand new SL63 AMG from Mercedes. So in this video, I'm going to break down how I achieved this look in Unity and made the render come true. So let's get started. First of all, I found some photo shoots of this car online, which was in front of this really nice house with an altar or like a pathway to the left side, which I really liked. I found some additional perspectives of that house to give me an idea of what I could go for and put these together in a mood board. I also put some other pictures of the car in different environments to get a correct idea of how the lighting should look and how the car should reflect that. And then this will basically help me conceptualize the idea. To put together the basic shape of the house, I started placing down some cubes in my scene. I also imported the humanoid from the starter assets pack, which is accurately scaled to the average height of a human, so that I can scale everything in the scene appropriately. This pack, by the way, is available for free on the asset store, and it's something our team created while we worked at Unity Technologies as employees. So make sure you grab it, it's free and it's available out there. The important factor in this starting stage is just to lay out a draft of what the house will look like. Materials, textures, and even reshaping and perfecting the house is not important for now. I just want to prepare the fundamentals necessary to make it to the final shots. Once I felt ready with the background, I started by adding the car model into the scene. I added one single light source and this was basically the directional light from the sun. The goal is to get a light source accurate enough to start playing with the composition in which the car appears and identify the realistic values for the materials of the car that we're going to use. Speaking of which, I am using the Measured Materials Library, which is a free materials pack from Unity. So I started off by painting the car in red by using the car paint material in the Measured Materials Library. I'm not trying to put materials everywhere for now, but I do put them on some pieces that are necessary uh, which will be accounted for small details later on, such as like the rims and the exhaust tips. I then position the camera somewhere where I feel it would look good in the final shot in terms of composition. I just move piece by piece, layer by layer and iterate. And I, I think that word iteration is key here because I will for sure have things that I'm going to want to change anyway. So why spend so much time in the beginning perfecting everything before the big picture is in there so I can see what it looks like and what the faults are. Let's continue by adding some details such as the windows next to the door, the depth at the top of the walls between the wall and the roof, and the individual pieces in the passway roof. This will give us a bit more advanced shading while remaining minimalistic. And now it's my favorite part. It's time to play a little bit more with the lighting and reflections. Let's change from the physically based sky to an HDRI. This will help us improve the ambient light of the scene and the overall vibe and colors from an HDRI that I actually like to use. We'll also put down our first few reflection probes to try and darken the inside bits of these exhaust tips. We attached a metal material to the tips, so naturally they will be very reflective overall. But truly what we want is the outer bits to reflect, not the inner bits. So a reflection probe will help us capture the light both inside and outside of the tips and darken that part of the car. I will also put some reflection probes on the rims and around the car to experiment with the reflections. And this is also why, like I said before, it's important to put the materials on these parts that will actually make a big difference, even though in scale they might actually be pretty small. But if you don't nail the reflections inside of an exhaust tip, you're screwed. Like that, that render is gonna be so bad. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new material for the rear lights of the car. This material is just gonna use the emission field extensively, meaning no textures, you know, nothing else. And in here, I'm just gonna increase the weight and exposure of this in a red color. This will give us this bright red color on the daylights on the rear of the car. We don't want them too bright and for this reason I do have the reference images that I put in the mood board in the first place to make sure that I am reflecting what's real, what's realistic. I then do this step one more time for the front lights, only this time obviously the lights will be white. But not pure white though, um, I did try that as well, but with a little bit of touch of blue it becomes better because this is to, this basically gives it that xenon light feel which modern cars have instead of having a snow white shade. Now that we have a pretty nice look, we should probably start texturing our ground to improve the overall accuracy of what the light in the final shot is going to look like. 
I'm putting in some marble ground textures and I increased the reflectivity a little bit. We don't want too many reflections though, otherwise it will look like it has rained and the car is a cabriolet with the top down, so we definitely don't want to go for that vibe. The door is using a different kind of texture for now than the one in the reference images. I went with a marble texture for now, which I think is fine because, I mean, if you're this dude and you live in this house, and you have a regular sized door with a normal texture, are you even rich rich? Like, like set aside the car and the house, just the door itself should be big, bulky, and textured in a weird way to make sure that it's clear that you're rich rich. As you can probably tell, I'm not very experienced with being rich. So with the new textures being in place, I test the new lighting and new perspectives to make sure that everything looks physically correct and to ensure that this is the tone that I'm actually going for. As I continue to experiment, I'm also adding in some of the necessary post-processing effects. I do want to leave color grading to the last bit, but for now, I want to add global illumination to get proper light bounces from the various surfaces in the scene, ambient occlusion to expose corners and shallow points to ambient light, and screen space reflections to improve the accuracy of the reflections especially on the car and the windows in the background. Note that I've also added a bloom where I put the intensity to zero so that I can see the raw results without any flares to start off with. After all the edits, I was satisfied with overall look, but not exactly with the color of the car. I was always trying to go for the Alpine Gray, which is sort of a key color for this car's branding. I really wanted to get that color and materialistic attributes, but I just wasn't successful. I even tried the red color at some point by giving up on the alpine gray, but then I was like, nope, you know what, I really like alpine gray, I want to go for it, I'm going to make it work. So I decided to scrap most of the lighting in the scene. I got rid of my reflection probes, well most of them, not the ones on the rims and stuff, the metallic colors of the car, and I just replaced the directional light source with a brand new one to reset its values. I even moved the car to another location in the scene under that passway to reset what my eyes have grown used to seeing after a few hours of working on this. I ended up turning down the metallic value of the car's material to like 10%. I increased the smoothness of the material all the way up and also increased the coat smoothing all the way up to get that high gloss finish. I ended up only putting together reflection probes for the exhaust and the rim. The rest of the car, I just let it remain natural. I tried the scene in multiple different HDRIs to find out which would give the tone that I was looking for. I decreased the directional light's intensity to like 30 to 40% as well to have a nice warm sunset feeling while it's clear that it's a little bit foggy in the sky and there are some clouds blocking the sun. Because you don't want this kind of like sharp sunlight just hitting all the surfaces all at once. And finally, with path tracing, I ended up with results that look like this. As I mentioned before, I ended up using path tracing for the final renders, and this wasn't actually my plan for this render at all, like I wanted to do a real-time render initially. The reason why I went for path tracing is because at some point, I just wanted this really nice and smooth GI at the passway and get more realistic reflections on the car. I could have compensated this by going real time and just placing my reflection probes accurately, but I wanted to see how big of a difference using path tracing would make here. For example, under these tires of the car, when you're up close with the camera, you can see the effect of the ambient light at the bottom parts. This makes it feel weightless, like there is no weight to the car. I tried a few different strategies with my reflection probes to solve this, but couldn't really get the results I wished for. Path tracing obviously immediately solved this, but for my next scene, this is one thing I definitely want to try to get right without path tracing. Additionally, the reflections inside the passway. I think it looks really cool with path tracing and would have loved to have similar results without it. I think with correct reflection placement, once again, I can get there. So this is something that I want to try and improve for the next render too. I'm also trying to make these videos the way I am right now, with flaws. Uh, I, I think I like to connect the dots at the end of the video, show where I messed up and talk about what can be improved, and then actually improve it to the next one. But ideally, I'd love for you all to jump in on this conversation through the comments so we can all learn and improve together via these videos. Let me know what you think of this render and this topic in the comments. Um, also, let me know if you find this video helpful. It is my first time trying these like render breakdowns the way I wanted to do them, which is, you know, which is something that I shared with you in my last video about why I took a long break. I hope that this format is helpful and entertaining, but 
please do let me know if you have any feedback so we can improve upon them. Lastly, uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm so excited to start this new phase of Saiku and I'm incredibly happy that you're all on board. I mean, the support on the last video was just insane and I can't tell you how much I appreciate every single comment we received there and all the DMs and you know private messages that I got just sharing support and showering me with that. So thank you, really appreciate it. So hit thumbs up if you want more videos like this, make sure to like this video. Make sure to subscribe to get notified on new uploads and let me know what you think in the comments. With that being said, I'll see you in the comments and in the next video. So have a good one and thank you for watching.